So today on the podcast, I've got a great guest. Uh, many of you will recognize him from Tiger Kim. His name is John Rinky. John, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Finally Appreciate you coming on. Month. Hey, no problem, man. I enjoy doing this. Yeah. So for people that wouldn't know you, John, like, would you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, you know, I'm just a normal guy that just got wrapped up in this Tiger King stuff because I enjoyed the job that I had. So uh, I'm just going to continue being a normal guy. I'm nobody special. Yeah. And what does a, a day in your life consist of now, John? Um, you know, I, I have three jobs. I work every day, um, business as usual. Uh, I'm actually starting to, since the COVID is starting to clear up a little bit, and uh, I'm actually going to get to go out on tour and do a stage show called Uncaged Tiger King, um, where four of us are on a stage and we get to talk about conversation and we let the audience ask questions and stuff. So uh, it's pretty cool. We've done one show already and then got kind of shut down, but we're fixing to kick that off again, too. So. Yeah, I seen you were going to start that. It was around October, November last year. Um, yeah, we yeah we October we did a show in Iowa, and I know this year I got some scheduled already for June, and I got uh, October's almost booked up. So, yeah, it looks like we're going to get to go out on the road this year. Uh, what can people expect from uh, from the show that you do, John? You know, it's pretty exciting because it's uh, me, Saf, uh, Josh Dial, and Barbara right now, but some of them are going to change, but. We get up here and have conversation and we talk about stuff that happened at the zoo that nobody even knows about. Um, it gets pretty in, it's get pretty interesting because Barbara has different look at life and, and so does Josh. So we may get in an argument or we may all get along. So it just depends. But uh, it's definitely entertaining. I promise you. I would imagine there is a, an absolute mountain of content and stuff that people don't know about that. You, could, you guys could probably talk for hours. Yeah, yeah. If me and Saf get started on a conversation, they have to stop us because we just keep going. Uh, so much stuff that people don't have a clue about. In terms of the show on Netflix, John, do you felt that with the the way it was put together, that it accurately portrayed the life pretty much in the zoo? It did. Uh, you know, everybody was spot on. You know, they toned Joe down a little bit. Uh, believe it or not, Joe's a little bit more arrogant and uh Probably they probably toned him down 50 percent. But uh, other than that, the show was everybody was portrayed just like they are. They can they can say what they want about, oh, you know, they made me look like a druggie or whatever. You know, they they fit the profile. Everything that Netflix did was spot on. Yeah. And I know you were there when Joe was kind of independently filming a lot of things uh, back in the day. Did a lot change when Netflix came in? Was it a lot more professional and what well, differences would, did it make? You know, Joe had a really professional crew on his video crew um, for the studio. Um, so it really didn't change. It's just uh, different people filming. But, uh, uh, you know, now since they're, they're getting they're getting ready to wrap up season two, so it'll come out. Uh, it's a little more uh, you got to deal with producers and directors now. Yeah. And uh, they're pretty bossy. They try and make you go this direction you know and, and you, you just gotta butt you gotta butt heads you know and just tell them hey this is this is this is me so they're kind of try to change it in a direction that's not natural maybe yeah yeah in in terms of yourself then uh, how did you get involved in working on the zoo and what did you do before that you know before that i was actually um working i just kept a labor job you know uh working on cars and stuff like that. And I went on vacation and took, took took my boys up to a place called Arbuckle Wilderness, which is just 15 miles from the GW Zoo. And uh, I was pretty disappointed when I went through there. And we seen this big billboard about tigers. And my kids said, let's go see that. So we stopped by that zoo. And I was impressed. I just I fell in love with a grizzly bear there. And I just started donating time, time and money. And just I kept taking care of that bear. If he needed something, I got it. And uh I just built a really nice rapport and the staff respected me and Joe got in a bind one night. Um, he was on the road and his manager left in the middle of the night, took all the money, um, all the tools and just left him high and dry. And, uh, he asked me if I could handle taking care of things till he got back. And, uh, from, from then on, 
I never left the zoo for 14 years. You don't regret any of it, I'd imagine. I do not. I don't regret a thing. You know, that zoo taught me more than any college could teach me in life. I promise you. Um, if there's if you have a question about a tiger, I bet I can answer it if something's wrong, physical or anything like that. And did you know anything about tigers before you went into that job or did you just learn on the job? I did not. You know, I had a pet monkey, but that's about as most exotic that it was, um, which she is still in Jeff Lowe's care right now. I can't get her back um, okay. just because he wants a big chunk of change to get her back. But um yeah, I mean, I didn't know anything about tigers and bears and, and alligators and stuff like that. So I, I learned a lot, I promise you. Uh, the veterinarian that was there, Dr. Green, she taught me millions and millions of dollars worth of information, I promise you. And in, in terms of the show coming out, like obviously it was huge. Has it affected your day to day life? Do people stop you all the time and say, hey, you're the guy from Tiger King? Like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I can't go to Walmart or the grocery store or anything like that anymore. Uh, somebody wants a selfie or somebody just wants to shake my hand uh, or, or you get somebody that stalks you and they just follow behind you, you know, everywhere you go. Um, but yeah, it's pretty crazy. They're just thinking, is that the guy? Is that the guy? I think that's the yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll get their phones and pull the picture up and try and compare me. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of when the show came out, did you have any idea that it was going to be as big as it was? Or do you think that it coincided at a good time where a lot of people were at home and therefore there was more eyes on it? Do you think that helped you? The COVID definitely helped that thing go to the top. Um, I didn't get to see it until y'all got to see it. When it when y'all got when it got released, y'all got to see it. I got to see it at the same time. I was scared to death I was going to look like a dumbass. I didn't want to look like a dumbass. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought I looked pretty good on there. But uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it definitely, the COVID definitely helped it. I thought... Ah, it's just going to be something that somebody might watch. Holy crap, it was something that everybody watches. Yeah, like uh, it's, it's it's huge all over the world. Like, because I was talking yeah. to you just off camera there, and I imagine like that you get kind of um, requests from people all over the world. Like, there's nowhere that this thing hasn't hit big. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, you know, our tour, they're actually looking at our tour, uh, some people somewhere in uh, Scotland and Ireland. And Australia is looking at the tour coming too. So, and I've never yes. left the United States, so it might be pretty cool. Yeah, be a good time when uh, when the world goes back to normal. You yeah. kind of With this lockdown and things like that, you kind of you realize how much you can do even from flying from place to place. You know. Yeah. It'd be great yeah, to see you guys out here. Yeah. So when when you look back on the show and you see yourself, you kind of touched on it there a while ago, and you you look at it. Do you have any regrets about anything or do you think, no, that portrays me perfectly? No, you know, I don't have any regrets at all. Um, people that know me know that that's me. I'm just a normal guy. I'm going to keep living my life. But, uh, you know, I thought they did a real good job at portraying everybody on the, on the show. So, yeah, I have no regrets. Carol has uh, made a huge kind of, I suppose, career for herself on the back of the show. And then you look at Joe, the main star, gone completely south from it. Like, what do you make of the whole yeah. thing? Like, and It's pretty crazy. You know, Joe's in jail for something that, I mean, Jeff Lowe right now by far has done way worse damage than Joe ever thought about doing. I mean, Jeff Lowe's letting him starve to death. Um, Carol, who hates Joe Exotic and hates GW Zoo, it's just banking off of it, man. I mean, every time you turn around, she's talking about Joe or the zoo, and she's just making millions off of it. So she's got to be loving life right now. Two things. Uh, what do you think is, we'll say Joe's hatred for Carol is one thing. But do you think that Carol kind of shies away in terms of the media from how much she actually hates Joe? She makes Joe look like the bad guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't think she really shies away. I mean, she'll tell you right. She'll tell you right to your face that, you know, she doesn't like Joe. She doesn't like Joe's ethics. You don't like Joe's the way he does anything. Um, but then she'll turn right around and make money on that comment. So it's pretty crazy how she's using Joe to make money. Yeah. When you were working with Joe, like obviously you could probably tell a million stories. But what was it like the time when he ran for elections? Uh, you know, I hated that. I hated the elections. I actually hated the studio 
because it just it took so much money away from the animals. And yeah. I wanted to take care of animals. And that's what I did. That was my sole goal was take care of the animals. And uh, then he said he was going to run for president and governor. And I said, oh, my God. And, you know, a lot of people don't know it, but he already had everything bought, uh, the shirts, the calendars, the pins to run in 2020 for president again. Wow. So all that stuff is sitting somewhere. Sitting somewhere. Somebody's got it somewhere. Maybe he can put it on eBay when he gets out. Yeah, there you go. Do you think he will get out sooner than expected? Because it's a pretty, pretty long sentence for something yeah. that's not substantial he in evidence. Will. You know, Jeff Lowe and Alan Glover and James Garrison, they've all come out and said that he was set up, uh, that they set the whole thing up. So they got to let him out. I mean, Joe's been in there way too long now for the charges that he had. And, you know, everybody's saying that it was animal abuse, animal abuse. It wasn't animal abuse. He shot five geriatric tigers that need to be put down because they were crippled from their paws. Um, and he shot them instead of calling the vet and doing it that way. But, you know, to some people, that's humane. And to other people, it's inhumane. So it's just how you look at things. Yeah. I, I assure you there's no animal abuse going on on that property. Yeah, I think he got har- harshly done by how, how long more has he gotten the sentence? Another 20 um, yeah, years, is it? He got 22 years, so he's only been in there two years now. So it's another 20 years. Yeah. A typical day uh, working in the zoo for you, like the conditions were kind of harsh and long and do you have any experiences of that um you know every day you know we were open seven days a week 365 days a year the zoo can't close because somebody's got to feed them animals um i was there a a lot of those days i wouldn't take hardly any days off um and it was just a, a long day they were 16 and 18 hour days every day and uh you had no life. You didn't get to go to the movies. You didn't go party with your friends. Um, you got up, you took care of what you had to take care of. You get on the zoo and then you go home way after dark. And that was just a typical day there. And you just, you just get a mindset and you just, okay, another day, let's do it. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen there that wasn't on camera from a, just say from a member of the public or, um, you know, the craziest, you know, I had a, um, I had a guy break into the zoo and try to cut my tigers loose one time. And I held him. I chased him around the zoo by myself because it was early in the morning. Just one guy. For 30 minutes. On I was on 911 the whole time. And I had my gun drawn on him and everything. He didn't care. He was trying to, to break into cages. And then he tried to climb in a bear cage. Um, he was just, long story short, he was off his meds. And uh, uh, he was the, the king of somewhere and he was going to let all them tigers loose to kill me and it wouldn't hurt him. And I, he was just kind of whacked out out there. But before I could get anybody on the property to help me, it took 28 minutes. Wow. And what was the relationship like with you touched on the police? Like, what was your relationship like with them? Did they give you guys any hassle or with the cops? Yeah. You know, they actually, you know, I didn't have a problem with any of them. They all. I want to say 90 percent of them hated Joe because yeah. they would get called out there for domestics. They'd get out, called out there for drunks um, because the staff would just party all the time. But yeah. uh, they hated Joe because, you know, they didn't like gay people and stuff like that. But, you know, they never had a problem with me. They never give me any crap. Uh, I carried a sidearm. I carried a firearm all the time and they never said anything to me. Um, so, you know, I got, I don't know, but they also knew that I wasn't gay. So we kind of think that's, they were homophobic, but it's, uh, I don't know, you know, they treated me good, but they sure crapped on everybody else. Yeah. In in terms of, you say season two, when is that going to be out? Um, you know, we don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, It'd be this year. I can say this year. Yeah. Um, They were, they were talking about March and April and then they just keep putting it off. They're trying to end it, but they can't. So sometime this year, it'll be out. So are you going to be involved in any of it? I'm sure I'm in it because I've had a lot of video. I've had a lot of cameras up my butt all the time. So. And is this going to be, is this old footage that's going to come out or have they been recording new Um, stuff with Carl? And it's going to be a little bit of both, but I know, I know they're going to do a lot about Tim Stark because he just lost all his animals. And I know they're doing a lot about Carol. So yeah, so it'll be new and old. Yeah. Very good. They have um, a lot of footage. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, because how long were they filming you guys for? Five years. Five years. Yeah. 
Uh, there's yeah, going to be more to there's going to be more started, than two series then. They started filming about Joe's lifestyle, being gay, having two husbands, running the zoo. That's how it started. And then all this Jeff Lowe stuff came up. And so they they kind of jumped over that and went straight to the to the bad side of Tiger King. So. Yeah. So it was initially just going to be kind of a biopic on Joe, really. Yeah. Yeah. A lifestyle thing. Yeah. So we'll go back to yourself then and we'll go to your plans for the future and for the tour. Like, obviously, you want to you want to get outside the U.S. with this thing. Like, What way is 2021 looking for you? Um, you know, right now it's looking like we're going to get out and we're going to get to do some shows and stuff like that. So I got to cut back on a couple of my jobs, but uh, I, I'm not going to quit any of my jobs. I'm just going to put them on hold for a little while. And then, uh, it, you know, if, if a tour comes up, I'm going. Uh, yeah. And I, they got a, I don't know, it's called the Bose Extravaganza. I'm going on April 10th. And that's uh, the Dukes of Hazards is what it is. Okay. It's a TV show here in the States. And uh, he has a big party and celebrates the car show and stuff like that. I'm actually going there to sign autographs and stuff, too. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Something to get used to, uh, something to learn, something I haven't done. So, yeah, you probably end up doing kind of conventions and things like that because yeah. the yeah. the whole lockdown fell at a bad time and in a way for Tiger King yeah. because you couldn't do any extras and things like that. Yeah, because, you know, we didn't make any money with Tiger King because Netflix don't pay for documentaries. So we got to make money on tours and stuff like that. And then the COVID shut everything down. So we didn't even get to go out and make money. So they they didn't really pay you guys no. at all or fairly? No, they don't pay. I mean, you know, they, if you got information, if you got a video or some pictures or something like that, they'll buy them from you. But it's no money. It's no life changing money. Um, I mean, it's not even a weekly salary that you get from them. So, yeah, they didn't pay biscuits. Yeah. Have you they didn't been, pay have, me biscuits anyway. Yeah. Have you, have you, when was the last time you talked to Joe? Um, you know, uh, we, we, we were trying to get him pardoned from Donald Trump and yeah. that's, I thought he was on the telephone that day. That's the only time I've ever talked to him on the phone. And that was in his lawyer's office. Um, I don't call him because he doesn't know how to shut up and he might say something that he doesn't need to say because everything can be recorded and everything can be used against you. So I won't talk to him. So, uh, unless I'm in the attorney's office. Yeah. Do you think, because um, we've seen over here, even in Ireland, that Donald Trump did mention it. Do you think yeah. that there was any any way that he was going to be able to get Joe out? You know, I really thought it, it was too much publicity. So he had to know what was going on. But I, my opinion is I think Carol paid Donald Trump to keep him in there. Really? I really do. Yeah. Like she she's she's very rich woman, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. She's got more money than we got. So. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing pretty good. It's just off her cameos this year, you know, she's banking seven figures. Yeah, she's doing like, uh, what, like shout outs for people on cameos. Yeah, yeah. All of us are, I think. I've been doing them too, but I'm not making nothing like Carol Baskin. But everybody wants a crazy lady that killed her husband to uh, do a cameo for him. So, so you you reckon that's true anyway? All yeah, signs yeah. point to yes, really. My opinion is, yeah. Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah. Well, listen, it was it was great for the, to catch up with you and really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. Hey, no problem, man. Anytime. And hopefully we'll see you in Ireland soon. I hope so. Y'all look for Uncaged Tiger King. I'll be there. Uncaged Tiger King. No problem, yep. man. All right. Appreciate it. Cheers, John. If you enjoy the content on our channel, we'd appreciate a subscription. Thank you. Thank you.